what's up dudes with the release of season 22 lucky raspberry got a full rework instead of recharging based on the number of enemies hit it now recharges grenade energy each time you damage an enemy with its lightning strikes from the jolted condition as well as each time you pick up an ionic trace in addition to this arc bolt grenades intrinsically stun overload champions and still retain the enhanced chaining capabilities from the old version we will be leveraging the rework by incorporating weapons that spawn ionic traces or proc jolt shocks this really will be a demolitionist dream. Also, I wanted to point out that the footage in the background is from Season of the Deep for the rework. This build does not rely on the old iteration of this exotic and will be better than shown right now. With that out of the way, let's get started. The super I chose to use was Gathering Storm, since it can jolt targets, which synergizes with Lucky Raspberry, and because of its great boss DPS capabilities. I went with Gambler's Dodge since the melee abilities on Arc Shredders are too good to pass up. Despite this build not being meant for melee combat, I still find Combination Blow to be great for applying damage and content with beefier adds. The grenade we have to use is Arc Bolt Grenade, obviously for its synergy with Lucky Raspberry. For the aspects, we're going to be using Flow State and Lethal Current. Flow State makes us amplified when we kill an enemy affected by Jolt, and while we are amplified we receive 200% additional base class ability energy regenerate, 50 reload speed, and a 0.8 reload duration multiplier with a 66% damage resist during dodges. Lethal Current makes it so that melee hits on jolted enemies apply blind. After dodging, melee lunge distance is increased and the next melee hit applies jolt and sends out an aftershock to nearby enemies within 5 meters. The fragments for this build are Spark of Amplitude, Discharge, Resistance, and Shock. Amplitude causes us to spawn an orb of power when we kill two enemies while amplified. Discharge progresses an internal counter towards an ionic trace on arc weapon kills. Resistance provides a 25% damage resistance buff when within 15 meters of at least 3 enemies. Lastly, Spark of Shock makes our Arc Bolt Grenades apply Jolt to enemies, which will play into our Grenade Regeneration loop. Let's go over the Demo Man armor. On the helmet, I used Harmonic Siphon, Ashes to Assets, and Special Ammo Finder. Ashes to Assets can be swapped to Heavy Ammo Finder if you like. For the gloves, I went with Grenade Kickstart, Impact Induction, and Firepower. With Lucky Raspberry, I slotted Harmonic Reserves, Melee Damage Resistance, and a Variable Resistance mod. On the boots, I chose to go with Harmonic Siphon, Recuperation, and Innervation. And on the cloak was Reaper, Powerful Attraction, and Bomber. You should really aim to go for 100 resilience and discipline with this build. While throwing a grenade is fairly safe, Arc Bolts don't stop enemies in their tracks, and they will continue to rush. Discipline is good to have so that we can have grenades at the ready whenever required. Let's move on to the Weapon Loadout section. Weapon Loadout 1 focuses on applying jolt effects and spawning ionic traces. In the kinetic slot, I use Round Robin. Hand cannons received a buff to reload speed, a 20% damage buff against minor combatants, and a 75% damage buff to majors. Round Robin hits like a truck, even though it kicks like a mule, but also rules with hatchling for some decent AoE damage. In the energy slot, I use Delicate Tomb. Lucky Raspberry synergizes with Jolt Pox and Ionic Traces, and those two things are right up the alley of Delicate Tomb. Kills with it have a chance to spawn Ionic Traces, and collecting one causes its next shot to Jolt targets. It's a two for one deal. If, for any reason, you don't want to use Delicate Tomb, Cold Heart is a good alternative since it can spawn Ionic Traces without needing kills. In the Heavy slot, I went with Half Truths for the mobility it provides via Eager Edge. Weapon Loadout 2 focuses more on long range AoE damage. In the Kinetic slot, I used a Distant Pull, a Stasis Rapid Fire Sniper. It can roll with Collective Action, Headstone, or Explosive Payload, so it's fairly versatile. In the Energy slot, I used Centrifuse. Since we will be amplified most of the time, it makes sense to use it for running gun action. Also, it can blind enemies on kill, adding much needed CC to our arsenal. If you don't like Centrifuse, Symmetry and Trinity Ghoul can work well too. Both possess splash damage to a certain degree, so you can't go wrong. In the Heavy Slot, I ran with Cold Comfort because it's my comfort weapon. Let's cover the game loop. The buff to Lucky Raspberry means that we need to prioritize getting Jolt proc on as many enemies as possible, while also collecting Ionic Traces. Begin combat by throwing your Arc Bolt Grenade into a group of enemies. This will jolt them due to Spark of Shock. Afterwards, use Delicate Tomb to start doing damage to them and spawn Ionic Traces. After picking up an Ionic Trace, fire Delicate Tomb at a different crowd to reproc Jolt and rinse and repeat. With all the chains and Ionic Traces, your grenade should recharge extremely fast. In the event that adds get up in your face, you can use Combination Blow to stack damage. Remember Remember that dodging causes your next melee hit to jolt targets in a pinch. This video was a ton of fun to make, even if a lot of it is speculation. Since we were given the armor updates early, I wanted to get to work and make sure a foolproof build was in order. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and happy farming.